Sometimes it's not the current data you want to look at. Other times it's the row before or the row after or any range of rows looking behind or almost like looking at a mirror image of the data. That's what we're going to talk about now in the next video. These are short two minute sessions designed to help you solve real problems rather than just wandering through syntax guides. In this session, we're going to look at lag and lead for the first time. Now, a word of caution. We're starting to look at more complicated problems now because we get a better grasp of analytics so we can tackle more complicated things. What that means is, if you find it a bit hard going, don't be afraid to pause the video and because the solutions are getting more complicated, don't be afraid to go full screen so you can make sure you can see all the small fonts. A quick recap before we do that. In the last session we looked at dynamic windows, the ability to dynamically change the size of a window on a row by row basis. The requirement we had was sometimes we need to look back just one day, other times we might want to look back two days, and other times we might want to look back three days depending on the row we're on. To do that we built a function, a simple function using the day of the week to decide how big our window should be, and we saw that we could actually use that inside a window clause to actually get the results we wanted. Today's requirement is I have the status on an order recorded every single day, but please collapse that down to just changes in status. Let's have a look at the raw data to see that example better. Here's our raw data for a given order number, order 11700. You can see that on the 3rd of January, it was status was new. And then every single day, we're actually recording the current status. So it went through some inventory check and it stayed there for a few days. Then it was awaiting some sort of management sign off. Then the order was in the warehouse. Then awaiting sign off again. Then payment was pending. Then some more sign off. And finally, the order was delivered. So the desired result is to eliminate those duplicates and just have something like this. It started off as new and then it went through its inventory check, then waiting sign off, etc. So the extra from and the two dates effectively collapse all those individual days that we had in the raw data. Now you might be thinking, surely that's just a group by, I can just do select status, min status date, max status date, and there's my result. But that's actually wrong. When we go look at the raw data again, you can see that it might go into the same status at different times. So it was awaiting sign off from the 9th to the 11th of January, but then it went back into awaiting sign off from the 15th and the 16th. That is a different awaiting sign off event. So we can't just collapse all them down into one row. What we need to do is compare the previous and subsequent values. Let's have a look at what we need to do. This is the quintessential version of why we have the word over in analytics. We are looking over a range of rows. Let's look at how lag and lead can be done to use this. Let's build up our syntax in the normal way. The function we're looking at first is lag. What are we going to lag? We're going to look at the status and look back one row in the past. Firstly, we're going to reset the lag every time we hit a new order. Then to define the ordering for the lad, it's going to be status state. That defines what the definition of looking forward or looking back in the case of lag would be, and we don't need a windowing clause. Let's plug that into our SQL statement now. And here's our result. We have the status, and then we have a new column that we've just calculated called the lag status. We can actually see that by doing lag one, each row looks backwards one row into the past based on the status state. On the 4th of January, the status is inventory check and the previous row was new. Now, what about the very first row, which was new? What's its lag? Well, like most other analytics, if there's nowhere to look back to, the result is null. What we can see now is we're starting to build up the logic on how we're going to collapse our rows. If the status and the lag status are the same, then we know that the status didn't actually change over that day and that's a row that we might be able to discard. If the status and the lag status did change, they went from example new to inventory check, that will be a date that we actually want to record and show in our result. Because of that, we're actually going to look at two functions now, lag and lead. They both are the same except lead looks forwards and lag looks backwards. And we can start to see the rows of interest. If the lag of the status is null, then that's the very first status, we're gonna want that row. If there is no change between the status and the lag status, that's a row that we can probably discard. But if we have a row where the lead status is null, then that's the very last status, and we're going to want that. Let's plug all that into our query. 
there's the query which has lead, lag and lead, and putting that text we just described into syntax, we want the lag status is null, that's the first row, or the lead status is null, that's the very last row, or there's been a change in the status. Now we could have done lag status or lead status, but we've chosen lead status. We wrap that in an inline view, and we have managed to meet the requirement as stated. There we have just the times when the status is new or delivered or the changes throughout the history of the order ID. You can run these scripts yourself by clicking on the live SQL link below. In the next session, we're going to continue on and look at some more lag and lead examples and some of the extensions you can use. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to keep it simple with SQL. We'll see you all again soon.